On today's show, we're going to be discussing the Florida Panthers holding their development camp scrimmage at the Ice Den, and we'll be discussing what Brian McCabe said post-scrimmage on mentorship and how the Florida Panthers' prospects be become the ultimate pros. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, July 14th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez. You can follow me on Twitter and threads at MondoMan12. Follow the show account on Twitter, threads, and Instagram at LO underscore F. LA Panthers, and thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here every day to get your daily Florida Panthers fix. So, Cats fans, uh, the Florida Panthers, they held their scrimmage at the Panthers Ice Den here in Coral Springs, which is where I'm at right now. Just finished up doing some notes uh, post-scrimmage, media availabilities, and now here staying here. It, it, at the at the den to discuss more about this uh just the the last two days that was uh for me witnessing it could only do so much from watching this from afar and the people who are actually here the first three days but just the the last talk about gonna talk about a little bit of the last uh day prior to the scrimmage talking about what the panthers uh worked on and what basically what what the panthers were working on is basically ed edge work and, and what they're doing as far as how they're able to accelerate speed and all that. And w one of the players that stood out for me was Skylar Brindamore as, as well uh, in, in the, in the day four of the, of, of development camp as, as well as Evan Nels. Evan Nels was one that, that stuck out to me as, as a guy who's, who skates around, scrape, skates around uh, the boards and, and getting it back up, uh, out to the point as, as well. And th those were a lot of the shots that the goalies were, uh, facing as 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 the as the skaters were going around the net getting it back to the top of the circle and then trying to get in position what, going from hugging to the post to back to the top of uh their crease as, as well and speaking of goalies and 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 positioning and all that david dorks um pointed out to me of so, someone like Coop, um cooper black who's six eight uh and talk about the positioning of his hands based on where where he is height wise versus a typical goalie who, who might be like six two to six five and where they keep their hands. Cooper Black has to have his hands like literally like b around his hips or even lower um, to to be in position and where most guys have their shots and in, in right in the middle uh, of of the goal as well or at the post. So uh, just an interesting uh, just an interesting tidbit there from uh, from David Dork that he pointed out and. Cooper Black was also asked about growing if he has any more growth, and he's like, "Please no." Uh, he, he's hoping that he doesn't uh, he doesn't have to do any more of that uh, uh, coming coming out of Dartmouth uh, College as well. It spoke about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, being a big goaltender. He can be back in back in the back of his net and doesn't have to creep up um, on the on the crease as well. But when it, the disadvantage of when he does creep up. Uh, that is, it's a little bit harder for movement there, and uh, we we did see Owen Brady take a um, get seven stitches also on day four of camp. Uh, he was talking about uh, in the media on uh, at post scrimmage about how they were doing a drill where you, he was not allowed to have his uh, back turned, and then uh, fell fell to the ice, and then his his visor kind of cut him, so got seven stitches uh, there. And we'll talk a little bit about more of Owen uh brady uh later but i also wanted to talk about really uh jordy Kinnear and what he said uh after day four and really spoke about the the guys there talking about foundational habits atomic habits as well he spoke about i think he said the word atomic habits and that's actually a book by the way by the author james clear 
Uh, and I wonder if uh, he, I, I didn't get to actually ask Jordy Kinnear uh, the lessons he took out of that, uh, of that book, if he even read it in the, in the first place. And talking about how, about looking at, after the guy uh, beside you as well, and spoke about, gave praise to a lot of the guys like uh, Grayson Sachin as well, who's a guy that really loves to go in front of the net. We, we, we spoke post, uh, post NHL entry draft about how he's a Matthew Kachuk getting in front of the net as, as well. Um, that, that agitator as well. So it's gave a lot of praise there and also spoke about how Mackie Semiskevich is the hardest uh, working person on, on the ice. And Mackie definitely uh, is one who uh, stood out in the, in, in the scrimmage as, 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 Man, Mackie Simoskevich, this guy's north-south game is outstanding. When he gets the puck out in space and and he's off to the races, is is uh, when 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 he does get the puck out, he's a uh, he's not afraid to lower his shoulder to guys who are bigger than him. We saw a play in the scrimmage where he was uh, he was not afraid to to get on um, uh, get there. Um, I, I believe it was against uh, the person defending him was Jabril Tory. Um, as as well um, there on on the on the rush chance that he had I had it ri- have it written down right here not afraid and uh, Tere is six seven and Mackie is just not not afraid to go uh, for um, after uh, uh, go after anyone there on, on a rush um, doesn't matter the size of them and I also got to ask Mackie Mackie Semiskevich after the scrimmage about Jordy Kinnear and bring him in. Um, whenever he has a bad game and asking about how he evaluates his game versus when a coach has to tell him and Mackie is mature enough to understand how they're, you're going to have bad um, make mistakes in the game. You're going to have some bad shifts. And then when, and he has a good enough grasp of, of the game of when he knows when he goes out there is like, eh, maybe I could have done a little bit better, better there, but as far as the scrimmage goes for Mackie Semiskevich, man, uh, he was, you know, you could tell that he was a first round pick there uh, c- compared to the rest of the guys. As far as the scrimmage goes, uh, n- not going to make a big deal out of Spencer Knight not playing in this, in, in the scrimmage as well. He, the, 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 the time that he practiced was really the, the, the big, the big deal as far as, Spencer getting a, a little bit of, of his reps in and just being around a hockey setting uh, again as well. So that so that's a uh, that's one thing that that is uh, very important for someone like uh, Spencer Knight as well. And also some other things that the prospects did do uh, there. And some of the common answers were loving the sun as well. We spoke about Blink One Eighty Two uh, back on Wednesday, but also spoke about making sushi uh, as well and. competitive juices that that the guys have on the ice you guys they get to know who are the funny guys who are not and one person who was uh spoken about how of of, of someone who loves to make uh, other people laugh is olaf gifford uh who just recently got drafted uh by by the panthers uh this year and uh, you, you get to know who are the quiet guys some of the quiet guys that you can tell as well based on how they address the media as well. Jack Devine is one of them, is uh, as one of those quiet guys. Does doesn't very a little bit of a reserved uh, person as well. Um, as far as my impression of him when he does uh, when he does uh, speak uh, as well. So you know it's kind of it's kind of uh, great for these guys to get a little bit of a setting. Some some guys to get to break out of their shell. I mean Liam Marnsby, he's a guy who's going to be going back to uh, to. Uh, to North Bay Battalion to, to be the captain of their team after spending uh, quite a few um, years there as well. So the fact that he's getting back here with guys who have been here for a few years, even though this is his second go around in D camp for the Panthers, he's taking that valuable experience back to North Bay um, it, it, as well. And it's a, uh, and also he, he said that uh, Blink-182 was uh, in fact his uh, first concert. But coming up in segment number two, we are going to discuss Roberto Luongo, um, what he said about the goalies as well. And we're going to talk more about the standouts in the scrimmage for the Florida Panthers. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about Athletic Greens. And 
our next partner is AG1, and I, I literally drink it every day or most days. I gave AG1 a try because sometimes I need a little bit of a break from the coffee. And then me, currently in South Florida, I have drank maybe one or two many cups of cafe con leche here. And uh, ask Alex Baumgartner of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Uh, I am one of those many Hispanics that dump my tostada in my cafe con leche. But I, I don't want to be doing that every day, it, especially with the caffeine levels, which Athletic Greens does not have. Um, so that's why I started taking my Athletic Greens because I, I because too much coffee, it, it actually does a disservice to you. So, but it does not, but AG1 does not give you those crashes. I usually take it in the morning and I feel great after that. So, the, though, highly recommend for you guys to um, go, go to, go to and get your athletic greens. And if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then get, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. The place you go is drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's ag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. Segment number two here on this Friday, July 14th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And as you noticed, it's Friday. No Fairbanks Friday, obviously. Um, if you didn't hear Nick Fairbanks' voice in the first segment, obviously, he's on vacation. His spot is not going anywhere. So best of luck, uh, Nick Fairbanks, um, and hope to see you next week, my friend. But Roberto Luongo also spoke to the media as well on on Thursday. He actually spoke on Thursday. And uh, also when it comes to the goalie excellence department about him – and seeing the game from upstairs versus down, he says it's a little bit, so much of a different game. And the it's 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 crazy when you when you're in that setting for so long, and 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 being on the ice, and then when you're going upstairs, the things that you can't control because you're not there, it's a little bit of of a different perspective that he has. And he of course he spoke about how the goalie excellence department, the goalies that they get, it's like you're managing your own team, which is such a a, a it's not just a praise that we Florida Panthers fans and media give the the Luongo and Leo and, and, and company because Leo is the one on the ice. Lu, uh, Roberto is like the one observing uh, this week. So, uh, but also when I mentioned, uh, I know I mentioned Olaf Glifford on the last segment, but Roberto Luongo spoke about how when he drafted, when they drafted Olaf Glifford, how, it's like taking his, his, the time, his, taking him back to his time on on the island when he was first uh, originally drafted fourth overall by the New York Islanders, and you know the communication of what's so important about communicating with the amateur scouting as well, and 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 all that that the relationships that is uh, necessary from that. And speaking of um, goalies, uh, Glifford did have um, play for Team Red. Uh, today for, during the scrimmage, and he got a shutout in the in the first uh, first twenty minutes. It was two periods, twenty minute running clock. The first fifteen minutes were um, five on five, while the last uh, last five minutes were three on three. And another um, another uh, player that stood out for me was uh, Wimmer Skoog as well. He got a goal um, early, uh, uh, right 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 in right in front, um, and. Also, Sandis Vilmanis, an, another another guy who 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 stood up for him, and uh, and Casper Puccio got a few posts. Uh, his his, uh, his 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 off uh, his off puck movement is, is great. Him and uh, him and Evan Naus were playing a tic tac toe a little bit, but there was a goal waved off um, due to Evan Naus kicking the puck into the net. But uh, but really liked what I saw from Casper uh, Puccio as well. I mentioned Vomanis earlier. He had a steal that led to, uh, to, uh, to his own goal. He, he made the steal and, and created his own, his, his own as, as well. And an, another, another one as well is, uh, is Jakob cause created a check in um, a back check in the, in the neutral zone that created a, r- a rush opportunity for Kai Schwent. I know I'm, I, I, I 
I mentioned earlier in the week that Kai Schwitt was the one that stood out from day three of development camp. But Jakob Kaz, again, great to see Jakob Kaz back on the ice as well. And he he's a and he's a he he's been a guy who doesn't look like that he lost a beat from his uh from his neck injury early, earlier back in at, back in March. So great to see that he he uh, is able to. They, the, there doesn't seem to be any limitations in in his game and uh and one of one of causes uh turnovers that he created was uh was uh one of the opportunities that Casper Puccio got off the post there was a scary moment during the uh scrimmage though where Skylar Brindamore did have a shot off the crossbar and it went all the way to where um the Panthers scouting department was and hit somebody in the head. Um, I'm not going to say the name of who it was, but hopefully that that person is okay. Um, and to think that there's a lot of netting around, ar- around the rink as well. So that, that was a little bit of a uh, scary moment as well. Uh, an- another one, uh, um, Jake wise is, is one that who's, who had a, a couple of uh, good, um, uh, he had a he had, he had a goal as well in this game from the low slot, and then he had a, a great uh, an, an assist in in the game as well. So I, I mentioned that Jake Wise could be a wild card to make the Florida Panthers uh, roster, um, just of, of the guys who are are here under contract. And I got a comment earlier last episode about Mike Benning why he isn't here. Um, Spent a lot of time with the Florida Panthers after signing his ELC, burnt that year. Really, and let's let's not forget he signed it before the Florida Panthers even started their playoff run, too. So he spent a lot of time with the with the team on 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 the ice as well and practices as well, even with the taxi squad. So he he's he he he'll be fine. The it's it's not gonna be a big deal that uh Mike Mike Benning is uh is is not uh here as well so so th- so not nothing nothing to worry about uh, about that but uh after the after the game they did have a a shootout after after and uh some, some there was one one uh one uh one moment where uh Giampa loses um his uh Matteo Giampa loses his handle for a second and then uh gets the puck out of the air and 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 scores a scores a goal uh in in the in the shootout as, as well um sandisville Mahanis as well going going five hole uh as well on 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 in the shootout as well so that that was a that was that was a that was some some highlight moments of the shootout portion of it but jordy Kinnear he spoke about how there isn't much there isn't going to be much to take away from the actual scrimmage what he wants is that these guys have a little fun play a little loose what the biggest takeaway is that coaches are looking for is how they respond in the meetings mostly and the the drills on the ice as well because during this time there's going to be a lot of uh, guest speakers as well um and whether it's former players or or just people who are I, I don't know all the names of the people who have spoken, but they, they maybe bring people who are probably what you consider life coaches as well to to discuss with, with these guys. And it's it's a great opportunity to just learn how to be professionals as as guys whose minds aren't even fully developed yet. So a, a great opportunity for 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 these young kids as well. So uh so not going to take too much out of out of what we saw in in, in the scrimmage, but of course, it, it's very obvious that once again, someone like Mackie Semeskevich is is a, is a guy who who uh, is it stands out mostly out of out of out of everyone in in the in the in in the scrimmage as well. So that that's a that's a it's just a and it, and let's let's also talk about the turnout for the scrimmage as well uh, the bleachers were full and and just kind of like the nhl alumni game um during all-star week uh you had a the 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 rink uh full from the bleachers all the way down to uh near where the shop and the concession stand were so it was a little bit hard to walk around um around there so not not just 
with the Florida Panthers making the Stanley Cup run. And I know these aren't the players from the the Cup run, but you you see you see how the game has grown here as well. And even and even after um, day four of the of development camp, the the, the how busy <laughs> this place is with the figure skating. Uh, the Top Gun hockey school that they have going on here as well, and public skating as well. R- right now, as I'm recording it, right in front of me, um, there, there's a uh, there's people figure skating right here. So the, the this place is uh, this place is just because they're building a new practice facility in downtown Fort Lauderdale doesn't mean that the busyness of this place in Coral Springs is n- is going to go down by any uh, stretch of the imagination but in segment number three we are going to be discussing what brian mccabe uh spoke to the media about how the players coming here the mentorship that comes with it and having to say goodbye to these guys after d camp we're going to discuss that more here on the lockdown florida panthers podcast your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Segment number three here on this Friday, July 14th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And and one one thing that's important about, you know, when you have a former captain in Brian McCabe with the, with the franchise and talking about scouting as well and the relationship of calling these young guys for whether they're drafted coming into D camp as well. And speaking of um, Owen Brady, uh, a a guy who has been through a lot these last two years uh, spoke about how when he got the call, he was working at the golf course, which he's going back to this summer and having that opportunity to, to still play, still play hockey and get an opportunity to, just showcase even even when speaking speaking earlier when he got the seven stitches that he's still a guy smiling and that's someone that uh that Brian McCabe uh excuse me Jordan uh, excuse me Brian McCabe spoke about how he's uh still very uh, upbeat uh, uh, when whenever he uh, when when uh, even when something like that happens because he, the guy just seems so happy to be here and it's just great to and you got to love the story of uh of uh, own own brady uh, uh, as well so and i actually asked uh, owen brady what his handicap is and he shoots he shoots around the 80s on the golf course so i wish i could be uh, i wish i could be somewhere <laughs> close to that and i can't say that my game is the same i won't i won't reveal i won't reveal mine uh for, for sure but <laughs> um yeah brian mccain got an opportunity to speak to um us after and honestly for a little bit behind um behind the scenes uh from the time jack divine finished his media availability to brian mccabe speaking it was about an hour and 20 minutes so he and brian mccabe was the last person to speak so we had to wait quite a little what was happening during that time these guys had to get flights to the airport you know you want to that that relationship time one-on-one to to say hey this is what i like about your game this is this is what i think you could take away from here and take it back to where you go to your junior program college you name it so although we were waiting for a little bit of time there we un- i kind of understand what this moment was for brian mccabe and the the young guys here at development camp so a, a little bit of the why behind why we waited and i have no problem with it as well uh where I, I got to ask uh I got to ask him, is this kind of like a situation where you see a young guy growing up and then having to send him off to college like a like I and you know, I can relate as far as someone who 
went out of town for college as as well for for, for and being in that situation. And Brian McCabe spoke about how these he's around these guys for 12 hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The change in attitude and 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 their development and kind of semi babysitting them. Um, and even though these are grown men, the the these guys are taking a lot all at one time and they're it's some sometimes this could be also a week of information overload too Let, let's uh let's consider that um when when it comes to the the amount of time that these guys i mean they're relaxing they're having fun they're doing dodgeball they're doing the sushi uh but it's they know what they're here for as well they're, they're here to be better players better professionals uh as well better men off the ice too and there's and you know this is a time where you're not me messing around you're not you're not you're trying to show that you have good character so that it's more than just your play so that when it's time to reevaluate at the end of the season i mean even though scouts are evaluating all season and checking up on you whether they're in europe whether they're in ncaa whether they're in junior um close by in in, in canada the, these guys these guys when because they don't get in around in person often they you're this is the time that you want to make sure that when the big name guys in the organization are looking at you you want to be you want to be the ones who stand out as well so it, it's just as important in, in that aspect when it comes to a, a week like this and and also and brian mccabe spoke about really how these guys have just you know th there isn't a bad apple in in the group as well and of course uh, I, I i mean I don't expect him to call anyone out. Let, let's let's kind of be honest here, but just the fact that these guys, at least most guys, are in order to make it in this league, you have to be coachable. You have to be able to respond with "yes, sir," "no, sir," instead of saying "oh yeah, I know." <laughs> so that's not what coaches want to hear, um, and and especially and you get kind of a feeling of the the reaction to the body language that you just can't always read when you're even when you're chatting with their agents or when you get that one-on-one -on -one time on on the on the phone when their time does come to be drafted being called to development camp as well. You can't all, you can't read their body language there. Um, or mid, or if they do have mid season calls too, you, you, you can't, you can't always read it. So this is the time that they go back and they take notes. They are, they are, and they are going to remember how you responded to everything. So that is one thing that you could uh, take away from, from what Brian McCabe said about the the chain the 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 development of not only their game but their attitudes uh, and and who they are off the ice as as well. So very very ex exciting week for a lot of guys who just love the game. Like like Jacob and I spoke about on Wednesday, there's no guarantees that everyone makes it to the NHL, let alone even play games in the AHL as as well but just the just to, for these guys to get around a hockey setting and get a taste of the professional and and th this is where you hope that they are salivating in order to get that opportunity opportunity to uh be back here and, and there are going to be guys who are going to be uh back here uh, after 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 this year the some of the recently uh drafted players who are just going back for their uh sophomore and 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 junior seasons um as well so the where and the the guys who are coming back for a second time spoke about how 
there's a different level of not necessarily nervousness, but you know where everything is. And we're going to, and hopefully we're going to see a lot of that development as well from the first year uh, guys as well, like a Grayson Sachin as well, Luke Coughlin as, as, as well. And we're, we're going to see how differently they approach a, a week like this coming up uh, ne next year as well. So th those are, those are something definitely for, all of us to be excited for and i and and i hope that they are and i know i know they're just excited for it as well so uh thank you guys for listening to this uh recap edition of development camp uh, hope that if you were at the scrimmage today that you all had a had a good time and you got to see some some players who could possibly be the future of this organization that in, in an organization that's still in the quest to win their first Stanley Cup or even help the 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 Charlotte Checkers affiliate of affiliate uh uh win win a win a win a Calder Cup at least under the Panthers uh ownership as well. So definitely an exciting week here in Coral Springs. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the locked on Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Every dayers, we are going to be back next week, and we are going to be discussing more about the defense market for the NHL and if a certain trade waiting to happen is the first domino of different transactions and if the florida panthers are one of those teams who are, could be making one more move before the before the off season is over we're going to discuss that all next week maybe some players it's superlatives as well and of course the topic that we've been putting on the back burner as well as far as the way too early power play and penalty kill for the cats so I'm Armand Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.